Hey guys, welcome back. This is the third video clip for the lecture on qualitative data collection. In this uh, session, or in this part, we are going to talk about sampling, sampling in qualitative research. Well, sampling is widely mentioned in the uh, quantitative research UEC. Um, because you know, for quantitative research, we are usually aiming for a prob probability sampling, um, which means we try to have a um, sample which is as uh, representable as possible. Well, as for uh, qualitative research, as we uh, said in the previous two parts, qualitative research is usually having a very small sample, and it's not easy to have a representative or almost impossible to have a rep representative sample, and, but it depends. It, it, is, it is possible, but when you're having a very small sample size, or if you're re or, and if you are having a large uh, research population, that would be very, very difficult. And so we do have um, a couple of sampling strategies that we can use in qualitative research. This is also linked to the concept of rigor, as we discussed in the second um, part of the lecture. For rigor, we need to make sure or we try to aim for a sample which or we're trying to aim for a research design which is as you know as representative as possible as valid as possible or as you know those four dimensions as um, reliable as possible and as valid as possible and so using an appropriate uh, sampling strategy would help us to reach to the rigor in our um, qualitative research. And, and that's the same for quantitative research. Having a suitable sampling strategy would help us to reach to the rigor. Okay, so sampling, the definition of sampling is about that you try to have uh, the, the data which can answer your research question. Okay, we try to make sure that we have the data, we have the sample, which the participants, uh, which help us to answer our research question. And compare with the quantitative uh, methodology, which they usually follow a probability sampling. Um, you, you would know that, uh, you will learn that in the uh, quantitative uh, lectures later. Uh, in this module. And for the qualitative sampling strategy, um, we could categorize them into two types. One is called purposive sampling, um, and the other one is called theoretical sampling. For the purposive sampling, uh, which most of the students in the previous years in this program um, have followed are this purposive sampling. So there are a couple of purposive sampling strategies. Uh, we could have a convenience sampling, which means that uh, you could uh, start, uh, well, you could you could go to the people you already know, or you could go to people who you feel easy to get access to. So this would be a convenience sampling. Or a snowball sampling. Snowball sampling would refer to that you start with, start with people that you, you have access to, and then you, ask them you or invite them to invite others that they know who also fit your uh, selection criteria of your sample to participate in your research that is a snow 
bore sampling process. So you start with people you, you already have access and ask them to invite others. So, so this snowball is getting larger and larger. Okay. Or you could try to be as various as possible or as representative as possible. Or you can just focus on some typical cases or some typical examples. For example, if you want to look at a phenomenon which only occurs on one or two companies in the world who actually have that phenomenon, then that is a typical case and you, you should just focus on that. That is also a special case. That's not only a typical, that's a typical and special case. Or um, you want to look at a company which has this, um, which has this issue and the issue which are typical in their industry. So you are studying a typical case. Or you could study a negative case. So it's the opposite of the popular case that you, you want, that your research is looking at. And in terms of uh, theoretical sampling, theoretical sampling, you would start with any one type of these purposive sample, samples. And then you would actually it says there and i put it here enter the field remember when we talk about the field in the uh, definition part of today's lecture and um, the field it could refer to an actual field or it refer to a workplace if your research is on the workplace or it can be anywhere and um, depending on what your setting your research setting is okay so you enter the field let's say you go to the company that you want to investigate and collect more data and um, when do you know when to stop or when do you know that you have enough sample and um, that that is a frequently asked the question by uh, students so theoretical sampling or theoretical there is a term called the theoretical saturation and it refers to a status that when um as as you're getting more samples as you're getting more participant pay and you are no longer getting new data that is the status of theoretical saturation Okay, what do I mean by I'm not getting new data? Let's say you have already um, interviewed, let's say, um, 20 uh, HR managers from the same industry and from the same size of business. And after these, after interviewing these 20 HR managers, when 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 you um, started to interview um, your participants number twenty one or number twenty two, you realize that there there is nothing new from this number twenty one and number twenty two participants, and that's like they are not saying anything new. All they're saying have already been covered by the previous twenty participants. That would be a status of theoretical saturation when you realize that you, you may already have enough participants. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, and here I want to give you some examples of what kind of selection criteria that you can set up when you are um, in your sampling process okay so it depends on the nature of your research or you know what research question that you want to answer so here i've uh, listed out a couple of selection criteria or how you know narrow you want you want to set your samples are and um, so the first one could be um 
the selection criteria is on the person, on its sex, on its ethnicity, um, class, job type, and type of employment, like whether they are full-time or part-time or whether they are agent workers and they are employees or workers um, or platform workers, for example. There are so many different type of selection criteria that you can you can use uh, when you try to restrict your your sample you, when you try to reach to a rig uh, and design of your sample try to be as specific as possible since we are having a very small sample size we need to be as rigorous as possible or alternatively you could focus on an accident here or crisis as now we are in the maybe middle of uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. That's a crisis. And if you want to focus on this crisis, yeah, that, that could also be a way to make sure your sample is rigor. Um, a particular type of behavior. Um, so here I give you an example of selection. Selection, uh, as I a selection, I mean, and in the recruitment and the selection process, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, some fundamental HR functions. Like you could look at uh, a particular type of selection method. For example, you could look at the use of maybe AI or a use of gamification in um, the selection process um, by HR managers. So that could be one way to restrict your sample. Or you could look at a particular type of policy or practice, a policy uh, such as an equality and inclusion policy. So you could focus on that policy or sustainability policy in um, in the manufacturing industry. That's that's just it. <laughs> this is a random example out of my head. Okay, so hopefully these can give you some idea of uh, how you can design your samples in the qualitative research. Okay, yeah. That's it uh, of this part on sampling. In the next part, I'm going to talk about um, the most, I'd say, the most popular uh, method used in qualitative data collection, which is interviews. Or oh, to be very precise, it is uh, research interviews. I'll see you in the next part.